Welcome to Time Capsule, where we delve into the intriguing secrets of the past. In medieval times, monasteries held a significant place in society, being officially regarded as centers of asceticism, service to God, and modesty. It mattered little whether they were immense establishments or women's monasteries. The rules of accommodation, the daily schedule, and the list of restrictions and regulations were essentially the same for all. However, history reveals that sometimes these nunneries, in particular, deviated from their expected role as models of righteous living, becoming centers of debauchery and even outright scandal. Curiously, each European country had its own distinctive features. Today, we will take you on a journey through the dark underbelly of Europe's religious institutions of the past. So sit back, relax, and let us uncover the secrets hidden within the walls of these once hallowed grounds. But before we jump in, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. The Scandals in Great Britain In the annals of Britain's monastic history, one abbey stands out with a notorious and unsightly past. Welcome to Littlemore Abbey, a place haunted by curses that have lingered since its completion in the 12th century. According to some accounts, the nuns initially prayed fervently, hoping that the ceiling would not collapse upon them. But as time passed, their fears subsided, and a different kind of darkness began to take hold within the abbey's walls. Rumors began to circulate in the surrounding area, each more intriguing than the last. It seemed that the nuns of Littlemore Abbey had abandoned their pious ways and indulged in scandalous behavior. Astonishingly, it was said that these sisters would extend invitations to travelers, pilgrims, and knights, offering them a night's stay. However, the cost of these services proved to be exorbitant, bordering on the fantastic. As the 15th century unfolded, the nunnery became a hot of sexual promiscuity, theft, and other unsavory practices. Young men and gallants were lured into the embrace of the nuns, and in the dim confines of their cells, orgies unfolded. To make matters worse, Many of these fortunate souls found that their money and valuables had mysteriously vanished come morning. The heavy drinking that accompanied these illicit activities swiftly depleted the church's once plentiful wine supply. Desperate for intoxication, the nuns resorted to selling church wares to fund their thirst for booze. But perhaps the most perverse aspect of Littlemore Abbey's history was the reign of Abbess Catherine Wells. Under Catherine's rule, the nuns endured beatings, starvation, and unimaginable humiliations, including sadistic acts of self-flagellation. In a twisted display of power, some of the girls were forced to sell themselves in order to secure even a meager amount of food. Meanwhile, the abbess herself openly engaged in an illicit relationship with a priest, ultimately giving birth to their daughter. Those nuns fortunate enough to enjoy the abbess's favoritism openly cohabited with men, making no effort to conceal their liaisons. Shockingly, some were even pregnant during the time of the bishop's inspection. This much-needed intervention took place in 1517, when rumors of the abbey's debauchery reached a fever pitch. Bishop William Atwater, compelled by the scandalous tales, dispatched his representative, Edmund Ord, to investigate the situation firsthand. What Edmund witnessed left him distraught. Much of the abbey's land had been mortgaged or sold off to the abbess's paramour. Furthermore, it was discovered that the abbess would offer her own child to the nuns as a guise of legitimacy when the priest conducted his inspections. During the investigation, it was revealed that several nuns who had been imprisoned in stocks as punishment by the abbess managed to break free. These rebellious sisters, fueled by their newfound freedom, openly defied Catherine Wells and sought refuge in a nearby village. They chose to live openly with their gentlemen companions, a stark departure from their former lives of seclusion. The mounting evidence became overwhelming, leading Bishop Atwater to issue the order for the dissolution and closure of Littlemore Abbey. The abbess herself faced grave charges, including nymphomania, drunkenness, theft, and adultery. This dark chapter in the annals of British monasticism stands as a stark reminder that even within the sanctity of religious institutions, human frailties and depravities can cast their ominous shadows. Honorable nuns of Italy, Italy, 
unlike Great Britain, had a different tale to tell when it came to the misdeeds within its nunneries. Neither were there instances of church goods being openly sold. However, Italy had its own astonishing accounts that left even their contemporaries staggered. The nunneries of Italy possessed a reputation that pushed the boundaries of imagination, for many of them had transformed into clandestine brothels hidden behind thick walls. Venice, a city known for its allure and intrigue, was no exception. Within its walls, nuns often donned loose-fitting short dresses, leaving their necklines exposed except during church services. Naturally, the demand for the affections of these beautiful nuns, dressed in their distinctive attire, was plentiful. The abbeys of Venice became bustling hubs, where men sought the company of these alluring figures. Accounts of this nature were vividly depicted by Alexander Perdasis in his book, The Life and Work of Balthazar Costa, Pope John XXII. Even the austere moral codes reflected in the nuns' clothing could not diminish their natural beauty and slender figures. Almost all monasteries throughout Italy welcomed male visitors, creating an environment that blurred the lines between religious devotion and carnal desires. The allure of these nunneries transcended the confines of the church, captivating the hearts and desires of those who sought such forbidden pleasures. Italy's nunneries, shrouded in secrecy, played a unique role in the realm of temptation and forbidden indulgence. While their counterparts in other countries may have engaged in theft or the sale of church goods, the scandalous tales of Italy's nunneries pushed the boundaries of what was imaginable. It serves as a reminder that the human heart, even within the walls of piety, can succumb to its basest desires. Spanish delights. Spain, much like Italy, was not far behind in its indulgence of an unholy existence. However, what set the Spanish convents apart was the distinctive character of the nuns, a peculiarity determined by the male visitors who bestowed official names upon these monasteries, likely based on the number and nature of services provided. The Abbey of Dolls, the Abbey of Penitent Magdalens, and so forth. In Spain, attempts were made to punish nuns for their indulgent behavior. As our contemporaries attest, the number of such convicted servants of the Lord grew exponentially. It comes as no surprise, then, that similar to Great Britain, there exists a case in Spanish history where a monastery was forced to shutter its doors due to the unimaginable extent of nunly debauchery. The scandalous behavior had pushed the limits of acceptability, leaving no option but to impose a firm intervention. The remaining nuns from the monastery of St. Leonard were placed under the vigilant supervision of the monastery of St. Laurentius, in hopes of curbing further moral decay. These accounts serve as a reminder that even within the walls of religious institutions, human nature can succumb to temptation and debauchery. The unique character and distinct practices of Spanish convents left an indelible mark on the annals of history, highlighting the complexity of human desires and the blurred lines between piety and sin. Attempts to bring order in Germany, which led authorities to take stern measures to combat the rampant debauchery that occurred in some monasteries. Unlike in other countries, German authorities dealt severe punishments to the offending nuns. In the Schwabian Jura region, for instance, the Nadenzel Abbey had transformed into a veritable brothel, open day and night for clients who could afford the delicate services offered by the affectionate nuns. Eventually, Duke Julius of Brunswick, a patron and benefactor of the monastery, decided it was time to put an end to the sexual misconduct. With his personal orders, the Mother Superior was literally walled in, effectively bringing an abrupt halt to the scandalous affairs. The German church authorities, to their credit, conducted preventive measures and announced inspections of monasteries. The results, more often than not, proved startling. For example, at Cephalingen Abbey, the majority of nuns were found to be pregnant, a telling sign of their transgressions. One of the most curious cases involved the so-called brothel for the nobility at Street Eberhard's Monastery in Oberndorf. It exclusively catered to noble and wealthy citizens. With about 20 nuns residing there, the monastery became a playground for debauchery. 
One favoured game involved suddenly extinguishing the lights during feasts, allowing visitors and keepers to engage in sexual encounters with anyone they encountered in the darkness. In an effort to curtail promiscuous visits to the monasteries, the authorities took a different approach. They simply forbade nuns from entering the city and imposed a fine of 10 goldens on anyone who dared to venture into a monastery with sinful intentions. Germany's commitment to discipline and order was reflected in its response to the improprieties occurring within its monasteries. Through strict measures, inspections and preventive actions, they sought to maintain the purity of religious life and suppress the excesses that threatened to tarnish the reputation of these sacred institutions. If you are enjoying the content so far, then consider liking the video and subscribing. French traditions, the land of love, as it was known, stood out not only for the light-hearted nature of its nuns, but also for the most authentic bacchanalia reminiscent of Roman revelries. In the spirit of Roman carnalia, when fueled by wine, men and women created a veritable playground of intertwined bodies and unchecked desires. It was even said that the nuns, despite the rules imposed by the monasteries of Paris, were expressly forbidden from partaking in these wild orgies and debaucheries. However, despite the issuance of bans and regulations, the nuns paid little heed to the words of the French church fathers. Nearly three decades after the initial prohibition was put in place, it had to be reissued once again. It seemed that the monastic communities simply ignored the directives. Interestingly, even in official documents, these scandalous gatherings were referred to as worship of the phallus and insane holidays but the prohibition did little to deter the fervor that gripped the nuns. In 1245, Bishop Odin, during his visit to the Wan monasteries, made a startling report. He uncovered a disturbing truth. The nuns were wholeheartedly indulging in indecent pleasures on a grand scale during the festivities. The forbidden desires had taken firm root within the confines of the monastic walls, defying all attempts to curb their extravagant and hedonistic celebrations. The land of love lived up to its reputation, remaining a place where inhibitions were shed and the pursuit of pleasure knew no boundaries. The nuns, driven by an unrestrained passion, disregarded the rules and regulations imposed upon them, embracing a world of unbridled sensuality and intoxicating freedom. The struggle of the French church to rein in these orgies and excesses only served to underscore the irresistible allure of indulgence that permeated the monastic life in this extraordinary land. Nuns and brothels. In the annals of history, a most astonishing and scandalous case unfolded in medieval France during the middle of the 14th century. At the behest of Queen Joan, a remarkable decision was made all harlots and promiscuous maidens were rounded up and confined within a specially designated monastery. On the surface, it was believed that these imprisoned nuns were there to atone for their sins before the Lord, seeking redemption for their wayward lives. However, behind closed doors, the truth was far more shocking. In reality, the so-called monastery operated as a genuine brothel, sanctioned and supported by Queen Joan herself. The abbess, holding authority within these walls, assumed the role of a gatekeeper, determining which clients would be admitted and which cells they would be assigned to. It should be noted that unlike ordinary brothels, the nuns within had significantly less freedom and certainly received no monetary compensation for their services. As we mentioned earlier, the workers themselves underwent periodic examinations by a doctor, perhaps in a futile attempt to mitigate the spread of diseases. Despite these measures, however, nothing could truly curb the pervasive promiscuity and deviant behaviour that permeated not only the confines of the monasteries, but also extended beyond their walls. This state of affairs continued unabated until the outbreak of the syphilis epidemic which ravaged society with its devastating consequences. The impact of this epidemic was no less severe than that of the plague, eventually bringing an end to the wanton debauchery that had prevailed for so long. The case of the special monastery in medieval France stands as a testament to the extraordinary lengths some were willing to go to in pursuit of their desires. 
where moral boundaries were flagrantly crossed, and the sacred institution of the monastery was corrupted to fulfill the carnal appetites of those in power. Thanks for watching the video, and if you found it informative, please like and subscribe to Time Capsule for similar content. We look forward to sharing more knowledge with you in the future. Until then, take care.